codenamed Operation Aphrodite, it would push the technological boundaries of radio control to new limits. Operation Aphrodite involved both the U.S. Army and Navy Air Forces. It was considered so dangerous they asked for pilots to volunteer. One who did was Ken Waters. And they needed volunteers for a special mission, but if you did it, you'd get credit for five missions and uh, get the D DFC, the Distinguished Flying Cross. The plan was to turn an entire war-weary plane into a flying kamikaze bomb. The aircraft would be packed with nine tons of explosives. Two daredevil pilots would then fly the plane to 10,000 feet. They would arm the bomb and bail out, leaving a mother aircraft nearby to steer the bomb plane by radio control. To take an aircraft off like that that's rigged to blow up, you have to be a special person. Flight control is handed over to a bombardier in the mother aircraft. He would guide the explosive-packed plane to its target. You had to control the throttles. You had to control the climb and the dive of the aircraft. So there had to be a lot of very innovative ways to control that airplane uh, with radio control. The pilotless plane, known as the drone, trailed smoke to help the bombardier and the mother aircraft keep track of it. Two television cameras transmitted pictures of the instrument panel and the view from the flying bomb's cockpit back to the mother ship to help the bombardiers aim. The bomb and the mother plane between them were a whole technological revolution. Even those who flew them found it hard to understand. I think I maybe had heard about television, but this was the first television I ever saw in my life. Because the technology was new and untried, the whole operation was incredibly dangerous. Within weeks of the first flight, a pilot died when his flying bomb went out of control. Another lost his life when his parachute got entangled with the plane as he bailed out. The most dangerous part of this mission, I felt, was the jumping out of the uh, drone. We were going at probably 160, 170 mile an hour, so the slipstream threw me up against the bottom of the aircraft. Then the smoke tank flashed by my face, and it had a weld seam on it. I can still see that weld seam. Uh, flashing by my face about this far, and then I was clear. Ken Waters was one of the lucky ones. Operation Aphrodite was the claim the life of more volunteer pilots. One of them was Joseph Kennedy Jr., the eldest son of America's most famous family. He volunteered for it. And without people like that to, to go out and, and risk their lives, you're not going to know whether this technology is going to work or not. On the evening of August 12, 1944, it was Kennedy's turn to fly the bomb-packed drone aircraft. Together with his co-pilot, Bud Willie, he took off from First Field Aerodrome bound for a bombing mission in northern France. They flew a Navy Liberator bomber loaded with 21,170 pounds of explosive. Kennedy was to fly to 10,000 feet before handing control to the mother's ship. His last task before bailing out was to arm the bomb. To do this, a new piece of equipment had been installed. An electronic arming switch, which replaced the existing manual system. At around 6.20, Joe Kennedy and Bud Willie started to throw switches and hand over control of the aircraft. Seconds later, there was a massive explosion. No one knows exactly what happened. The speculation is that when, when Kennedy flipped the switch, there was some kind of short circuit or something untoward happened, and that airplane exploded and, and obliterated everyone aboard.